leaders should be mentors. In order to succeed, I know being in corporate, I had several, several mentors, and mentors <coughs> can be in any walk of life. Hey folks, what's up? Grandison Science here with Saduri International and welcome back to another Mastermind discussion. Today we're going to continue our conversation on leadership roles. So we talk about leadership. Yes. Leadership is very, very vast. And guess what? It is not easy being a leader. You have a lot of weight on your shoulders and you may have big shoes to fill, fill depending on who your predecessor was or whoever you're succeeding. Now, Let's talk about, actually, let's do, before we get into the conversation, let's do a review on the previous nine. So we did three parts already. If you haven't watched those, go to our YouTube channel or go to the website, saduriintl.com. Watch those, click on the, actually the blog session, and then you'll be able to watch those videos there. So let's review, Yasmin. What do we have here? Actually, oh, hold on, hold on. Before we get uh -oh. into it, introductions. Introductions. Yes, yes. Yeah, I almost forgot. I have Who my two are you favorites. talking to? It's I know. Who am I talking to? Today. I have my two favorite coaches here. On my left, I have Yasmin Murray with Sideri International. And on my right, I have yep, Al Gleason, the curator of nonsense. There you have it. Now that we are formally introduced, we can continue on with our conversation. I'll speak in my Harvard voice today, right? <laughs> All right. Harvard. So, uh, first right, one so is? The first nine leadership roles, very first one, they are great learners. They are visionaries. Right. They are great communicators. <laughs> right. They are amazing team players. They are team builders. Leaders are motivators. Leaders are strategists. Leaders are change agents. And leaders are problem solvers. Ooh, you have a lot of weight on your shoulder. And guess what? You should be all of those. Do not neglect any one of those. In fact, the three that we're going to give you today, you have to incorporate that with the nine that she just read. So let's dive into our conversation. All right, so leadership. Again, let's first talk about the, some of the other nuances of leadership. Al, when you think about leadership, what comes to mind? Just all, just all encompassed. All encompassed. I think a person, an individual who cares about people mm -hmm. and wants the best for them. All right. That's what I think when I think about leadership. Cool. I like that. What about you? Leaders are role models. They lead by example. Leaders are role models. So both of them point on, right? I'm going to add this. Leaders, we also have to understand that we have a great responsibility. And it's not, and as I said earlier, it's not easy being a leader. There are a lot of things that we have to pay attention to. It's not, there are times that we have to be selfish. That first level mindset, as we talk about in our modality, the five levels of thinking. But we also have to very much so think outside of ourselves. And there's a lot of skill sets that we have to acquire and learn how to build upon as our tenure in leadership grows, as we mature and our positions as leaders. So we have to make sure that the skill sets that we have are second to none. Strive for that at least, right? Strive yes. for second to none, being skills, skillful in your craft. We're also, and this is most important, we are masters of ourselves. We have strong self-awareness and it only comes by introspection, that comes by ruminating, comes by pontificating on different things. We have to make sure that we know who we are as a leader. Yes. So we can bring our best self to any situation where we need to lead. Yes. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right, cool. All right, so let's talk about three other factors and what you could, should be as a leader. First of all, what's the first one we're going to talk about today? Leaders are mentors and coaches. Mentors and coaches. So what comes to your mind when we talk about mentors and coaching? Like I just said in, uh, in the beginning, that leaders should be <laughs> mentors. In order to succeed, I know being in corporate, I had several, several mentors, and mentors <coughs> can be in any walk of life. You don't have to have a mentor in, in the company that you're working in, or you can find those people who kind of talk your language. I don't know how, how to explain it, but you gravitated towards them. Mm -hmm. They energize you. They, they feed you with intellect. They motivate you, 
and they bring out the best in you. Sure. And they could be anywhere, any walk of life. Yep. How about yeah, you? Yeah, I agree with that. I, I would say when you're considering a mentor, when you're looking for one, sometimes they fall into your laps, but sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. So find somebody who is an example of what you want to be. Very somebody good. who's achieved Very what you idea. hope to achieve. Absolutely. And, and learn from them. Because sometimes <clears throat> it's not that warm and foo-foo, you know, warm and fuzzy type right. of situation. Sure. <laughs> sometimes they, they can be hard on you. They, their goal is to bring the best out of you. Yeah. Very true. Uh, but sometimes you have to seek them out. And that's, that's a great place to start, I think. Yeah, I like that. I like those ideas that you guys share. I am going to say, if you want to be really technical, you can separate mentor and coaching. But we're going to categorize them conceptually in the same area. Because this person feeds into you. They, they challenge you, or these people, or however many you have. And you can have different coaches and mentors for different things. So you don't have to have just one. Could, should. Could, like should. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And that makes you a more well-rounded person because this one guy may have more expertise in financials, one guy may have more expertise in, in people skills, one guy may have expertise in present, presentation skills, whatever that may be. But whatever this person, like you aspire to be like I was talking about, they definitely make sure you stand at their feet in humility, right? So that's the main thing when coaching and mentoring. You have to come to the, the table in humility, being this open book, being a sponge as well, and being able to chew, out, chew the meat and spit out the bones. Because everything that they are disseminating content-wise might not work for you, might not, and that's okay, mm -hmm. because you still get those nuggets that can, instead of incrementally increasing, you're gonna exponentially increase, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. They should have a, a better prow prowess in understanding some of the difficulties of being a leader or your position, and also be able to tell, challenge you to think differently from your current way of thinking. The way you currently think might not solve all your problems. So they'll come to you with a different challenge, making you expand your mindset so that you have a more open thought process. Right, and I just want to add, so we're talking about it from the perspective of finding one. Mm -hmm. It's also important as a leader that you one. are uh, one. Exactly, yes, you know, exactly. So the same things apply with you as a leader, being able to mentor somebody else, being able to teach them, yep. show them a way. Uh, Yasmin mentioned leading by example. You know, that's a great way that, that we're mentors as leaders. So I think that's important as well to, to, to be mindful of that because as a leader, you can't be uh, always self-centered mm -hmm. and just do things that, that are in your own best interest. Sure. Right? You have to consider those that you lead <clears throat> and be available to be a mentor, to be a coach, uh, and be an example for them. Yeah, I like, I like that. I agree with that. And you can ask someone to mentor you. I mean, if somebody doesn't volunteer, you can just go up to them and say, hey, do you mind being my mentor? I know you've done that. I've done Absolutely. that. And people, you know, they look... You look up to someone and they want to take you under, under, under their wings because they know they have the experience to, the, to mold you into what you can potentially be and they see the potential in you. Now I've got a question for you. Can a mentor be younger than you? Absolutely. Absolutely, yes, of course. Yeah. But that's where the humility really comes into place because sometimes our ego can't get in the way and if someone <laughs> is younger than you, you might not have that opportunity or you might not give them the opportunity to be your mentor or coach, but absolutely. Yep. In fact, I know a couple of coaches that we have that are younger than us, so. But they have a, a skill set and a really strong skill set in a certain area. And they, then vice versa, we talk about leadership, they'll ask me some questions because they're not that versed in what we do. So there you have it. So you should be a leader or be a coach and a mentor and you should also have a coach and mentor and keep a coach and a mentor. Even the greatest in sports and other activities, they keep a coach, they keep a mentor because they are considering, considering getting better all the time. I want to increase my prowess, I want to increase my skill set. So definitely have a mentor and be one as well. I have another question. Should sure. mentors seek out mentees? Mm, there are, there's a certain way, from my perspective, and I'll let you speak out on, on your perspective as well. From my perspective, it's more powerful when the mentee seeks the mentor because the, this person might not value you like that in order to sit at your feet and learn from you. So it's much, much better, and you have much better opportunity when the mentee seeks the mentor or the coach. That's just my perspective. What do you say? Uh, I agree, and I, I, I would like to... Uh, take out the might and say they won't <laughs> they will not value you 
if you are not not the same. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think I think it's important as a leader. Uh, I talked about leading by example. Mm -hmm. I think you you inherently should be a coach and a mentor. Now, I don't mean you should seek out that one on one and say, "Hey, Tyrone, I want to be your mentor." Right? You don't do it that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, so maybe not the mentor-mentee relationship, but absolutely a coach. You are a leader. You should be coaching all the time. I, you know, I find myself, I'm a, I'm a coach. I am a parent. I coach and parent everybody's kids. <laughs> you know, it's just it's inherent in me. I don't care who your mama is or your daddy is. If I see you doing something wrong or if I see an opportunity for you to get better, I might ask, hey, can I show you something? But then I'm going to do it. I don't, I don't wait for them to come to me. So you think about you leading a team or leading an organization. If you have that mindset, then you are growing your team and your organization uh, you know, organically without mm -hmm. having to wait for them to come because oftentimes people are not going to come. People sure. don't necessarily sure. want this mantle. Yeah. They don't necessarily know that they need to get better. Yeah. No, right. you as a leader, understand that. And you, you can yeah. coach and, and grow. I totally what? agree. You said no, and I was going to say I beg to differ because I know I've had people on my team that didn't know they needed to be mentored and they had an ego like some of the mentors do as well and you can seek and I know it's happened to me several times that there are people in on it on your team that have more potential than others mm -hmm. they just don't know it they, they're diamonds in the rough and you need to give them more attention you will have to I mean sometimes you just have to say hey can I have more of your time because there's things like you said I need to coach you, I need to mentor you I need to develop you because you are that diamond in the rough so sometimes you do have to seek out those individuals who don't know what they have or what they need and they have the potential and you see it I will add this caveat that w that definitely works if they're already on your team if I see somebody else has potential on someone else's team I oh, can't yeah. go to there no. and say right. so, no, no, no. so I'm gonna add that I'm gonna add that as a caveat yeah. maybe because as a leader you gotta you should exude leadership everywhere you go as you're yeah. talking about yeah you should exude the zoo being a mentor coach everywhere you go however and if someone isn't on your team, because you should, well, first of all, as leaders, we are responsible and we should be held accountable for developing high performing teams. Point blank, I said it, I'll, that's it, all right? Now, in terms of mentoring and coaching, yes, you de have, definitely have to make sure that you get your team to perform at that level so they can be high value employees. So I agree with that. And that I, think it's, I think it's a situation where, uh, a situation that requires uh, savvy and finesse. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's from modality number eight, right? Which one is that? Six strategies of execution. Six strategies yeah, of execution. There you go. Six strategies of execution. Gotta execute that way. <laughs> so yes, we are talking about our modalities. All right. So point number two for this video is leaders should be decision makers. Oh my God, this is such an important one that I've yes. been harping on some of the people I'm coaching uh, currently. Just make the darn decision. <laughs> You know, they just need, sometimes they need validation. Should I, should I not? Should I, should yeah, I not? Just do it already. Out. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Leaders should be decision makers. Yeah, I'm leaders sorry. should be decision makers. I, that's totally it. You make a decision. I totally, totally agree. We coach people on this all the time. And that is a muscle that you have to develop. And you have to be confident. Decision yes. making is very much so coupled with confidence. Not, I mean, all of these are, but so much more in this one because you have to believe that what you are deciding to do is the right thing to do. And you just do it. And so when we have to teach, we have to mentor and coach our employees how to be decision makers at the time. So when they come to us and say, hey, I have this, I'm thinking about doing this, or I, have, or I need help doing this, my question and the coach and the mentor would say, well, what do you think should be done? And let them coach them to the answer, but not give them the answer. That's what we are supposed to do. Coach our subordinates, coach our mentor, mentees, our coaches to an answer, but all the time don't give them the answer. Sometimes when you need to give them the answer, and there's some yes. certain situations, but most of the time when you are developing, I say all the time when you are developing high performing team members, you should allow them to make their decisions. They may fail, they may succeed. You doc document the lessons learned on both accounts, what worked and what didn't work. 
and continue to move forward and therefore they'll develop that decision making ability so when they are out in the field or wherever they are they have the autonomy to make the decision and then you have to understand how to speed up the process of making the decision as well speed and then not sacrificing the quality or the accuracy that in which you make a decision how what do you say i think i'm gonna say maybe it's a little known fact or something that a lot of people don't understand okay but as a leader many times when you make a decision and commit to it that's what makes it work we get caught up in whether it's the right decision or the wrong decision mm -hmm. and the reality is either decision could be the best decision as long as you commit to it it's not always black and white it's not always right or wrong per se but leaders that are convicted in the decisions that they make they have conviction mm -hmm. I said that wrong they have conviction about their decisions many times that's what makes it the right decision and I was reading a study that was talking about it was that they, they interviewed these high-level CEOs and that is something that they, they believe, wholeheartedly believe in is not a right or wrong make the decision and commit and that will make it right so when you think about people who invented things or people who uh, did these things that were unheard of on the surface it wasn't the right decision it didn't make sense it was crazy but because they committed to it, they were able to bring it to pass. They were able to make it happen. So I heard this analogy. It's, uh, it's like when you're in Vegas, uh, when, you, when you, you're trying to bet, maybe that's the time to be a little anxious before you make the bet. Mm -hmm. But after you place the bet, man, have a good time. Like, let it go. That, that's not the time to worry. It's too sure. late now. Too late. You made the You'd decision. Made the decision yeah. right? Yeah. Once you make the decision, commit to it. Yeah. And so I think as a leader, that's what's really critically important. And then we talk about uh, your followers and subordinates and that type of thing. If you don't have confidence, if you're not sure, they're not going to be sure. Sure. But on the flip side, if you're convinced, man, they're running with you. Cool. What do you say about it? Well, I have a lot to say. So, <laughs> first of all, decisions, like you said, right or wrong, make a decision. If it's a wrong decision as a leader, admit it and fix it. You can always, I just want to interject that part. That, that's really important. Yeah. If, it's, if it is the wrong decision, you can change. Yes. Fix it. Change. Exactly. Fix it. <laughs> and that was the main thing I wanted to say. Yes. People don't make decisions because they think it might be the wrong decision, but you can fix it. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that you yep. can't fix. Now, on the flip side, the speed of, of making the decision, I was having this conversation that leaders take time making decisions sometimes when you take time to make a decision that decision is already it's made for you yes <laughs> it's already made for you so yeah. don't take time make a decision make a quick one right or wrong as we talked about you can always fix it yeah speed accuracy and timing yes. of the decision. Mm -hmm. Timing, we talked about blockbuster. Yes. Decision making about the timing, yep. not yes. making the right decision, it just diluted and uh, evaporated the whole company. Yes. It yes. was gone yeah. in a poof because the timing of the decision right. wasn't right. Many times, indecision is a decision. Sure. Right. Right. Yeah. right. At right. least make one. At least make one. <laughs> right. Take Gotta control of the situation yes. and make a decision. Yes. Because if you don't, a decision will be made for you, mm -hmm. right. essentially. And a lot of new leaders, they hold on to, they have these crutches, which they call people that they go to the crutch. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you think? You know, mm -hmm. getting a second opinion or a third, third opinion, you're still wasting time. And somebody had asked me, what helped you? Uh, how did you get to make decisions? As I said, you know, it, it came with time. I wasn't always a quick decision maker, but what really triggered it, when my boss just, he would just become unavailable. Mm -hmm. And that, that made me make the decision. Mm -hmm. So true. if you are a good leader, if you have taught and helped your team in every which way, and now they're coming to you still, and you're their crotch to make the decision, be unavailable. <laughs> Let them make that decision, right or wrong. If it's wrong, be there to support them. If, if it's right, give them kudos and pump them up and give them the confidence. Yeah. That's sure. all I got There's so say. much we can say about decision making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I will also say this. 
In order to give, say for instance, emerging leaders or people who are doing positions, you can have a process that can help make the right decision as well. That will help in the process are the certain decisions that could, should be made to get the outcome that you desire for that particular thing. Right. So don't neglect the, the opportunity of having and the power of having written and optimized processes, processes. in the business. Processes in the business. We all say it like that, processes, right? In the business so that you can make a help or you have a tool to help you make the right decision in, in lieu of whatever that you're doing. And then definitely stand in confidence in doing that. Stand in confidence. Gotta say be it with your chest. Confidence. That's right, <laughs> right. Deep voice, right? Growl at it, yeah. do what you gotta do. And then just go do it. Implement right. the decision that you have decided. Yes. All right. Point number three. Leaders are influencers. Influencers. What do you say about influencers? And influencers. I think one of the greatest ways to influence, back to your original point, is leading by example. Mm -hmm. We talked about having mm -hmm. conviction. We talk about leading by example. If you do that, you're going to have a tremendous influence uh, within the organization. Sure. The other thing I would add to that is as a leader, find out what your subordinates, uh, the rest of your team, even you know your superiors, find out what they want and align your leadership with their goals whenever possible. Mm -hmm. Because then okay. you can get buy-in from them and everybody's pulling the same way. Yeah. So that's another way to have influence of you. You know uh, what their goals are and you align your objectives with theirs. Mm -hmm. Man, shoot, I'm going with you. We're, you we're, we're on the same team. That's it. Yes. What do you say about being an influencer? Um, you know, for me, when you talk about influencing, like Al said, first of all, you have to have a goal. And in order to influence people, you have to lead by example. And that's all you've got to do. And if they trust you, and trust, they have to trust you in order for you to influence them. I mean, we watch on TV all the time these influencer influencers. People don't even trust them just because they like the way they look or how they sound. Oh, I want that because they have it. And now here you are as a leader, they see you as this authoritative figure. Whatever you do, they will do. Sure. Because now they trust you, you have helped them through thick and thin. Trust to me is the most important factor in influencing. Sure. I will say this, I'm gonna take it from a different direction. One, leaders are influencers but not all influencers are leaders because yep. yes. if you have all this this massive amount of people to follow you and but you don't have a direct relationship with them they may be following you but you're not leading them so to me there's a little bit of a difference and then let me add this as well because you're an influencer let's say you are in your department or you're in an organization you are leading by example whether you believe it or not they see you and that can be positive and negative. Yes, whether it's so, intentional Exactly, or not, right? exactly. Yeah. So if you're that leader that blows up and people perceive that because they're following you, guess what? You may have subordinates that blow up and be emotional and respond that way to their subordinates. Why? Because you have led by example because you have influenced them and they see that as okay. But if you see someone that says, hey, you know what, let's talk about some rational way and let's talk about this and utilizing certain communication techniques, then also the people, your subordinates, they're going to adopt the way that you tackle that yes. difficult decision as well. And we're supposed to be the ones who set the temperature in the room. So again, you are leading by example on both sides, whether it's positive or negative. Our job as leaders is to make sure that we present ourselves in the best way and lead from a positive standpoint so that our influence, so the people that we are influencing also see that and they are going to have like <laughs> manner just like us who are the superiors. So that's what I want to say about influence. Yes. I have a question. <laughs> All right. <laughs> question. So as an influencer, should you follow a leader or an influencer blindly? Well, what are you talking about? Well, as an influencer or as a leader that's influencing? Well, a leader who's influencing. Follow them blindly? I don't believe you can follow a leader blindly if you are actually looking at that person that they're your superior. You gotta see them, so I mean, I me, don't mean literally blindly. No, I'm not saying blind, like you're like closing <laughs> your eyes. I know I'm, talking, I'm saying, I'm saying you have to have, there has to be a relationship there, from my perspective. In order to really truly influence the people and subordinates that you could and should be mentoring and coaching, I say there's a, a relationship there, and so following blindly 
is different. But however, you, I can see someone else and be like, you know, I want to be like them. I want to be like them because of how they carry themselves. And I can adopt some of those like manners. So is it still finally, is it still following blindly? Maybe that's an instance where blindly is taken in consideration. The reason I ask, there have been instances and cases like the Columban where people have died because the leader said, let's just kill ourselves. Yeah, but they have a relationship with them, so it's not blindly. Yeah, They're making a decision, in my stand, from my standpoint. I don't know. Right. I mean, what, do you, what do you say? I think I would say, if, I, if, I, if I'm understanding you correctly, I would say no. All right. a, a, real, a true leader is not going to have you do something that's you know, detrimental to yourself like that mm -hmm. extreme example you just provided. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have to be self-centered first. Right? For you to be the best that you can be, you have to take care of yourself first. So uh, when you talk about leading blindly, if somebody's asking you to do something that's, you know, that could bring harm to you, no, you should not do that, if that's what you're alluding to. Yeah, I mean, the example just recently mm -hmm. with, uh, with Washington, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we, we still... Uh, what part in Washington? There's a lot going on there. So yeah, be more specifically oh, with, Washington. With, with Trump the, and, you the, know, the, the capital. Oh, the capital. The capital yeah. yeah, but there's a relationship there, right? So they have somebody that they admire, that they're following. Waco, Texas, Columbine. We can continue to name all these other instances where people did things that were detrimental to themselves, right. but they had a relationship in right. following those people, and they made a decision. So is that blindly? No, I don't say it's blindly, because they made the decision. They know what this person is all about. I think so when you say blind, I think typically, at least my understanding, when you say blind, blindly following somebody, that means you don't question what they're right. asking right. and those types of they're things. They're passionate about you as a person, so right. no so matter what do, you, you do, do, they right. will do because you ask them to do right. it. So that's I'm, I'm going to say no. You, you need to be aware. Yeah. And, well, that's you know, what I'm saying. Yeah, and, and you, you need do, to be, uh, exercise no, judgment. Judgment, yeah, right. caution, right? judgment. Because there are times, there are people I follow, and I don't question what they do, but I utilize my judgment in order to make the decision on whether or not I'm going to do that or not. Right. So there we have it. Anything else needs to be shared on that? No? Yeah? <laughs> no. no? All right. There we have it, folks. Thank you very much. I'm Granison Shines here with... Yasmin Murray. And... Al Gleason, the curator of nonsense. All right, folks. Until next time, we will chat with you later. Bye.